Alright, it's me again. Today we're going to talk about alternate picking. I'm going to start off really easy. One string, down up, down up, down up, down up. That's what alternate picking is. Are there other ways to pick? Yes. Should you learn them? Probably. Um, I like to use a combination of alternate picking, legato, sweep picking works its way in there, we'll get there. A lot of people think sweeping is like a lot tougher than it really is. Don't be afraid of any technique, no matter how big the name is, or how uh, exotic or genre specific it might be. We just work things into our muscle memory and make that natural so that we can make choices on the fly, what we want to do, how we want to sound. Alternate picking. One string. Now, notice. My right hand stays in one place. So basically, I try to find a home base, and usually what I do is set, set it up so that this side of my hand, my thumb side, covers the lower strings, comes at an angle like this, all right? And my pick usually hits right around the base of the sound hole, and it kind of like comes at a diagonal, a very slight diagonal, as I go up. The reason I do this is because it's good to dampen the strings. Dampening is when you cut off the strings so that they don't ring. If you don't dampen, it sounds like this. I cut the string off, it's still ringing. If you dampen, cuts off. Our hand gets to be our sustain pedal. Our hand controls whether it has sympathetic vibrations from the other strings, is I think the terminology right. That can sound really good. Some guitarists love that, you know? It's like a natural reverb. Oh, it can be beautiful. I can hear that third ringing out. Um, we don't always want that alternate picking. Find that home base, and as far as dampening, this is a very important part, so I'm gonna kind of harp on this. As you move up, you're not really worrying about dampening with your right hand once you get to the sixth string. At least I'm not. Once I get to the sixth string, my left hand is taking care of the dampening because I am playing down here. Those other strings are just getting covered by my the fleshy part of my index finger there. That way I don't have to be real tight with my playing, I still, you know. That way I don't have to be really tight with my playing and I don't have to, I don't, I don't like to worry a lot when I'm playing, I don't like to micromanage my hands and so the best way is, like I said, dampen as you go towards the sixth string with your left hand and with your right hand as you're closer to the first string. As you move down, you're your right hand naturally uncovers the top, the thinner strings and keeps those low strings covered as it goes down. One string, alternate picking, all we do. You can fan your fingers, you can close your fingers off, whatever feels like it's creating less tension. One reason a lot of people fan their fingers and touch the base of the guitar or the body of the guitar so that they make sure that they are coming from the wrist. It's not really necessary. You just need to be mindful that you, even though you can go faster this way at first, <laughs> you want to make sure you're not r really hammering on uh, your guitar's string coming from your elbow. It's not as accurate. It's not as even. Even when I close my fist, I'm kind of making contact with the guitarist's body 
on this top string. Uh, I don't usually open up my hand a whole lot, at least not consciously. But I'm always kind of making contact with the strings or something with these knuckles. It just helps me, it gives me a bass, something to perch off of. It helps make sure that my right hand technique is coming from my wrist and not my elbow. So now that you have the one string, move on to the next string. And as you go down, you might want to dampen with your left hand a little bit too. Once you get to the low string, it's going to be ringing out a lot. Your choice. doesn't matter. Now, crossing strings. Crossing strings is probably the toughest thing with alternate picking because a lot of times you'll be coming off of three notes on a string and moving on to the next string. So you'll go down, up, down, and then have to hop over the next string for an upstroke. This is something that I don't like to think about when it's happening because otherwise I start to over exaggerate the skipping motion and the plucking up motion. So as far as what your right hand is doing, this is where it becomes important not to hit the string straight on, but kind of angle your pick a little bit like that. It'll move it out of the way when it's going up and down. And you still don't have to change your motion. You don't have to do any kind of like weird hopping kind of thing. Um, you can just go straight up and down. And the trajectory naturally misses the next string. So here's an exercise that will help you with that. Now keep that pick angle tip in mind. We're going to go two on the B string one on the high E string. See if you can keep a quarter note beat and play it as eighth notes or sixteenths. to keeping an even beat, even though you're playing an uneven amount of notes on the string. Alright, so two on the lower string, one on the higher string. Now let's go one on the B string, two on the high E string. So you'll feel that one note changing from a downstroke to an upstroke in each rhythm cell. each one. Once I get good at both of those, I will first of all do it on the next string down. But I'll also start to switch. I'll do one repeat of the first phrase and one repeat of the second phrase, like this. speed, have fun with that one. And this will help you when you have to cross strings and still hit an upstroke, or cross strings and still hit a downstroke even though you're going upward. Once you have those open string exercises done, next thing I move on to, of course, is a scale exercise. Alright, so the first one I do is the first one that I showed you for legato, where you're just at the top of this A minor scale, and, and that one you can loop. you can get it. Uh, start out slow, even, loud. And Alright, uh, the next thing I will do then is the sequences. And again, keep in mind, pick angle and also maintain down up down up picking coming from your wrist. Mm -hmm. 
So after I do those sequence practices, I will start to do the same thing again. I will alternate between legato and alternate picking with each repeat of the phrase. So, for example... thing with the sequences. Alright everybody, hopefully that alternate picking lesson was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, shoot me an email, josh at andrewwhiteguitars.com. I'd be glad to help you. Alright, thanks guys.